So how are you doing? Hello. Can, you can doing? you hear? Can yes. you hear my voice well? Yes, clearly. Okay. Okay. So uh, how are you doing? Yes, <laughs> I'm okay. I'm fine. Uh, wait. Uh, after after this class, I I, I also have my class here ah. at the afternoon also. Yeah. Oh, I see. So, so in uh, this morning, just prepare the class. Yes. Ah, okay. So busy day. <laughs> ah, yes, yes. Especially on Monday. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We, we have a time for a talk around one hour, right? Yes, right? for one hour okay. for uh, this first uh, talk and then- Two times. Uh, yeah, and next okay. week, uh, the same time. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Do any student here have a background on the fish disease before? Uh, or just the biology microbiology and microbiology and microbiology. Yes. Okay. So most, okay. Uh, mostly the students from uh, biology, biotechnology, and for uh, marine science. Ah, okay. Mm. Uh, fisheries and marine science. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. I think probably students from, from fishery and marine science may direct to my talks more ah. than more than uh, other players. Yes. Yes. So uh, I think we can start our uh, program today. Good afternoon, everyone. And Sawadikap. Sawadikap. Wassalamualaikum. Long time no see, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Since and since was... COVID outbreak, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. We met. Uh, I think two thousand nineteen. Uh, yes, around two years ago. Yeah, and I hope that after uh, the pandemic is over, I can go to Thailand again. To, yes, yes. Uh, to Please welcome. Okay, so <clears throat> good. Uh, let me do this again. Uh, Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's nice to see you again. And today I'm honored to present our uh, visiting program in a biotechnology study program with Conagora University. And today we have uh, Professor Chanarang Rotkum from Faculty of Veterinary Science at Chulalongkorn University. And before <clears throat> we start uh, the talk, I will uh, read the curriculum vitae from uh, Ajahn Chanarong. Okay, so his background uh, education is from Bachelor of Veterinary Science from Chulalongkorn University, and then Doctor of Philosophy from Laboratory of Genome Science, Graduate School of Marine and Science Technology, uh, Tokyo University of Marine Science and Technology, uh, Tokyo, Japan. And then uh, his uh, employment since March 1997 as a veterinary practitioner, a uh, small animal in a teaching hospital, Faculty of Veterinary Science, Chilalongkong University, uh, University. And since October until since October 9th, 1998 until present, uh, lecturer in veterinary microbiology department of veterinary microbiology, faculty of veterinary science, Chulalongkorn University, uh, and then since June 2016 until now, director of international graduate course of veterinary science and technology. Uh, PST, Faculty of Veterinary Science, Chulalongkorn University. And since February 2017, Head of Department, Department of Veterinary Microbiology, Faculty of Veterinary Science, Chulalongkorn University. And since August uh, 2018 until present, Director of Fish Infectious Disease Research Unit. Now it's Center, uh, Center of Excellence, yeah? 
Yes. Uh, yeah. So right now it's a bit and uh, become a center of excellence, uh, Faculty of Veterinary Science, Lamaq University. And his field of interest is in fish infectious disease and pathogenesis, especially in bacteria and viral pathogen of fish, such as Streptococcus, Flavobacterium, and etc. And the current project is development of nano delivery system vaccine for potentially used for prevention of bacterial disease outbreak in tilapia and Asian sea bass. And uh, he got many like publication. Sorry, I lost it. Okay, uh, so he got, he got many publication until now, I think more than uh, 100 publications related with uh, fish disease. So uh, now we will listen to the presentation of Ajahn Sanaram. Please, Ajahn Sanaram, time is yours. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Anto, for introducing me. And also, thank you very much for uh, Depanekoro University for inviting me to uh, be a uh, lecturer, uh, visiting professor on at, at lecture. Uh, actually, uh, when I talk with Dr. Anto, uh, he, he would like me to talk about the biotech uh, application of biotechnology for vaccine development in, in aquaculture. But uh, because we have two time of uh, talk. So I will separate uh, this big topic into two small topic. Today I will, I think we, we should talk about the uh, ba uh, basic background of aquaculture and also the disease of fish, uh, how to characterize the pathogen from fish first. And then uh, on uh, 1st November, I will talk about the, the uh, application of biotechnology in, in vaccines. And I think uh, most of you probably would like to, to know about how to develop the nano vaccine, right? Uh, okay. Let me share the slide. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can see it. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, so today we we'll talk about the molecular research in Thailand aquaculture. Uh, talk about the pathogen characterization and also antimicrobial resistance monitoring. Actually, for uh, this uh, PPT set. I also, uh, I, I have already used for talk in uh, uh, the invited talk of uh, Indohun, I think last, uh, last month, yeah. And I think, I think it's also related to our topic. So I, I uh, would like to use this uh, PPT for talking again. Okay, as you know, uh, right now aquaculture is, uh, the world aquaculture is increased a lot. Right now, uh, it's about uh, the, the aquaculture production will need uh, to increase by around 50 million metric tons per year. Um, we have uh, a lot of uh, freshwater aquaculture and also uh, uh, seawater aquaculture in Southeast Asian country. Uh, most of my research I, I uh, do in the freshwater aquaculture. The species that I focus is uh, most is the tilapia. And also we uh, in Thailand, we have the uh, freshwater culture sea bass that I think Indonesia also have also. Uh, you, you, some of you may know that uh, usually the, the uh, ASEAN sea bass, we culture in sea water, but right now we can adapt them to culture in fresh water uh, also. So uh, the two main species for freshwater aquaculture in Thailand is tilapia and uh, uh, ASEAN sea bass. Uh, another most important species is Uh, also, uh, such as the walking catfish, 
the striped catfish. The, uh, this one is cultured a lot in Vietnam. Yeah. And uh, also the common carp, also famous in Vietnam. Uh, talk about the tilapia, that is the species that I focus on my research. We call uh, it as aquatic chicken because the world production of tilapia is a lot. It's around uh, 4.5 uh, million tons per year. It's the, it's the, uh, it is the most consumed fish globally, and it is uh, now called, that, uh, that's why it's now called aquatic chicken. Okay. Uh, when we talk about aquaculture or uh, freshwater aquaculture, the successful and sustainable uh, in uh, fish health management is cannot be just only uh, one thing, like not antibiotics, not vaccines. We have to compose many things together. So this slide, we talk about this, the uh, parameter that will make us to, to be successful in fish farming or, or uh, fish aquaculture. The first one is the, uh, the health, bo health booster for, for fish, such as the probiotics, immunostimulants, and vaccine that we will talk uh, deeply in the uh, biotechnology uh, use in vaccines uh, on the uh, next time, okay. Um, the next one is the farm, water quality and environment management. You have to have a good management for farm, for uh, water quality treatment and protect the environment. Uh, uh, that will be very important for, for uh, aquaculture species. Okay, the next uh, parameter is breed. Breed is very important. You should use the, the good breed, or uh, if you can select uh, the one that we call the diseases resistant fish or diseases resistant breed, it will, it will be better for successful for fish farming. The next one is biosecurity. In case that uh, uh, you have some outbreak uh, in the farm or around uh, your farm area, you need to concern about biosecurity for prevent uh, fish or uh, aquatic animal species in the farm uh, aware away from from uh, from the disease outbreak around the farm. Okay, and also if the disease is occur in the farm yourself, you have to protect that disease not uh, spread or not outbreak into another farm. Okay. The next parameter is farming skill and basic knowledge that I think is, is also very important. Of course, uh, the people that have experience or have a lot of knowledge for fish culture or fish uh, farming should, should be uh, get more success for fish farming than the uh, uh, new comings uh, in, in the field of uh, fish farming and fish aquaculture. Okay. Uh, last but not least, I think nutrition is very important for uh, successful in fish farming. The nutrition that uh, we should use is should be according to the uh, stage of the fish or stage of some uh, fresh uh, some uh, aquatic animal species that you are gonna culture. If you use the wrong formula for uh, for the stage of the fish, you will not success in fish farming. Like uh, when juvenile, you need high protein diet for fish. When uh, it became a growing period, you may need to adjust the formula for them. Yeah. And uh, to, to, to let them gain the best, uh, we call a uh, feed conversion ratio. The best feed conver conversion ratio is one. Yeah. So if you like, when you give one kilogram of fish to, to the fish, you should get one kilogram of fish also. If you can make this number is nearly one or uh, one, it will be the best that uh, you will gain the best benefit for, for, the, uh, for the feed or nutrition that you use for fish. Okay. Okay. Uh, I will, next slide, I will talk about this one, the pink color, the health booster. Okay. 
because it will be matched to to my uh, area of, of expertise. Okay. For fish health management, you should have uh, appropriate stock density for fish. You should have appropriate nutrition for each breed and period. The water quality management and monitoring uh, should be always uh, monitored and keep clean, keep, keep uh, best water quality for them. Okay. You can supplement with immunostimulants such as vitamins, trade mineral, and uh, some uh, immunostimulants also like beta care. Yeah. Or uh, I suggest you to use the probiotics and symbiotics in, in uh, aquaculture. It uh, will be used, uh, uh, it will be give you a, a best benefit uh, for, for fish, like it can promote health of fish and it's called, uh, also uh, will stimulate some non specific non specific immune response to protect fish from from the uh, pathogen okay and the last one is the vaccines if you could uh, develop or have a vaccines for a prevention of the important fish disease it should be very good okay but of course because uh, we have a lot of disease in fish and another kind of uh, aquatic animal species is maybe it's impossible to um, create or to develop all kind of uh, vaccines for protect all, all kind of the, uh, the, the, the pathogen. But at least you should select which one is the important uh, pathogen for aquaculture in your country. Indonesia may different from Thailand. Uh, for example, I can give you a, a, a very little information that uh, for bacterial species in Thailand, we may have uh, the problem, main problem from Streptococcus species and Fravo bacterium species. And also uh, another one is the Aromona species. But you have to see in your country if you would like to develop vaccine for fish, it's same in my country or not. You may can see that the Fravo bacterium is not so important for your country. Maybe yeah, it's, it will be another pathogen. Yeah. Or even uh, we have the same uh, common interesting uh, pathogen one like Alomonas. You have to see the species of Alomonas is same or different from, from another country. In Thailand, the four Aromonas uh, species that have a lot of problem. This may be Aromonas veronii. Then you have to see in Indonesia, you have to characterize the pathogen in Indonesia is also Aromonas veronii or not. It may be another like Aromonas hydrophila, Aromonas tuberdii, or Aromonas dakensis. Okay. What happened when failure uh, of fish health management? Of course, you, you have a disease. Yeah, not only the, um, the infectious disease that come from the failure of fish health management, is, but uh, also the disease from nutrition and for another metabolic disease also. Okay, before we go to uh, the, the last part of the vaccine, we should know the important infectious disease for, for fish. Uh, that I think I will give you an example for tilapia because I cannot talk uh, the, the, the important disease of all fish, okay? Uh, I give you an example from, from tilapia and from uh, sea bass that I think in Indonesia, uh, as I see from the data, you also have a lot of tilapia culture and sea bass culture also in, in Indonesia, okay? The first one is streptococcosis. We will see the detail later, okay? Sorry. Streptococcosis, coronaris, hemolytic septicemia, such as aromona septicemia and Edward Sella septicemia, uh, francisellosis, tilapia tilapin virus infection. And right now we have a new outbreak of uh, tilapia power virus infection. 
parasitic infections such as trichodina and chylodactylus, and the mixed infection or concurrent infection. That uh, the last one for the last one is uh, very common in fish disease in in all country in the world because the uh, the disease in fish usually not come single infection is is always come as a mixed infection or we, we can call concurrent infection like sometimes streptococcus and flavobacterium streptococcus and aeromonas or even bacteria and virus to get come together is a uh, very 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 rare that uh, the disease will come alone Okay, uh, when, when we see the tilapia uh, culture, culturing step, we will uh, separate into a phase like this, the hatchery, hatchery uh, that's, that's mean the culture of uh, the, the fish that newly hatched from the egg. Then uh, we will, uh, for Thailand and in some country, we will uh, use hormone for sex reversal because when we culture um, the, the male, only the male fish is, uh, is will let the farmer gain more benefit than uh, culture the female because when female have lay an egg, they, uh, they will like uh, uh, put the egg in the mouth so that they will not eat anything. So it's hard to gain uh, uh, feed conversion ratio from them. Okay, so that's why we have to make a sex re reversal to culture only male fish. Yeah. Then the next step, uh, we go to the nursery. Nursery is mean we, we feed them from like one gram uh, from the hatchery period to around 10 gram, and then move to the pre grow out pond. Uh, from 10 gram to around 100 gram. Yeah. From this time to this time is need around two to three months. Then uh, from 100 gram move to uh, grow out porn until the market size around one to 1.5 kilogram or two kilogram. It depends on the market. Uh, then the point that I would like to talk is you can see that all stage of tilapia culture can be involved with many, many uh, pathogen, many, many infectious disease, right? Uh, for example, Fravobacterium coramne, Saprolegnia, the fungi, Trichodina and Tylodactyrus, yeah, and uh, Iridovirus, Streptococcus, uh, uh, RLOs, uh, some of you may uh, don't know what it means. It means rickettsia like organisms like Francisella and um, Pisirickettsiosis. Yeah, that, that is a uh, uh, rickettsia like organisms. Okay. Um, I may not talk deep into the detail of the pathogenesis or uh, the, the deeply detail of each uh, disease, but I just would like to, to show you uh, what is the clinical size, the major clinical size of each uh, disease. The first one, streptococcosis, freshwater streptococcosis, or even the, the seawater streptococcosis, you will see the same. Uh, because the streptococcus usually infect uh, as the uh, bloodstream infection and also is caused meningitis. Okay, or the problem of the meninges at the brain. So the fish usually got the uh, erratic swimming. They will swim like circle swimming. And uh, when you see their eye, you will see, you will always see the pop eye or we call exoptomia. Okay, this will be like this. It's very common occur in Thailand until uh, our farmer can diagnose from the clinical side themselves that this, this one is the uh, streptococcosis of fish. Okay. 
The next one is the, the uh, bacterial species and disease that I focus on my research a lot. That is coronaris disease that's caused by Flavobacterium coronae. It's caused a very high mortality or devastated uh, disease uh, in, in tilapia because uh, uh, it's in fact the gill, mainly at the gill. When fish uh, gill cannot function, that means fish cannot breathe. They cannot exchange the oxygen between the water and uh, uh, the blood circulation themselves. So uh, the fish usually die when the gill is completely broke by uh, the bacteria or completely destroyed by this bacteria. Yeah. But not only the gill that infect by this bacteria, also the fin, uh, many plates of fin will be uh, will have a fin rot like this, or sometimes it's in fact at the skin until you can see like the uh, we call sudden back disease. It's like a, a sorry, I don't know how to call it in English, but it look like something that you put on the horse back across the body of, of the fish. Yeah. So that's why we call it a sudden back disease. Yeah. The next one is the bacterial hemorrhagic septic semia. I'm sorry, my computer is not working well. The bacterial hemorrhagic septic semia, okay. Um, it can be come from many kinds of pathogen infect them, such as Edward Sela species, Aromonad species. Okay. Um, the majority of clinical size is the, the large uh, area of hemorrhage at uh, the body and also the internal organ. Okay. You can see many uh, place in the internal organ that is will be hemorrhage, like at the uh, Kidney, this is the cranial and caudal kidney and also the internal organ. At the, at the uh, external uh, hemorrhage, it should usually occur at the body surface and also around the, the fin of the fish. Okay, the next uh, species, the next important species uh, or next important disease is francisellosis that's caused by francisella. In Thailand, it's main, mainly uh, from francisella noatunensis, subspecies orientalis, or right now you can call francisella orientalis. It's caused like white spot nodule in the internal organ like this. Sometimes when you see the clinical sign like this, you have to make a differential diagnosis uh, from uh, of many diseases such as no cardiac infection, mycobacterium infection, and also francisella infection or pisericaciosis infection, pisericaceae infection. Because when, when we see the uh, white spot nodule like this, we don't know, it's maybe, we, we call maybe fish TB from Mycobacterium marinum also, or maybe from Nocardia, or maybe from Pisericetsia. So we have to make a differential diagnosis first and then rule out by the first thing that you need to do for francisellosis, uh, suspicious disease is you have to do acid fast staining. If you found acid fast stain, uh, stain positive, it may be no cardiac or mycobacterium infection. But if you don't found acid fast positive, you can rule out it and come into francisella or pisericaceae infection. Okay. Or even the uh, Edward Sela iteruli infection is can be uh, the uh, can 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 uh, make the lesion like this also. Okay, so uh, let's say that uh, not, not only Francisella that give this uh, clinical side to the fish, another uh, field pathogen can give the clinical side like this also. Okay. 
Okay. Next species is tilapia tilapines virus infection, or some of you may call tilapia lead virus infection. The fish will be uh, uh, have a non-specific clinical sign like uh, the big belly. Yeah, because big is big belly because inside is the acetic uh, is contain acetic fluid. Because the tilapia leg virus infection is mainly affect effect at the mm, sorry effect at the uh, liver of them is is uh, the the pathognomonic lesion or typical lesion of tilapia leg virus infection is syncytial tan cells at the liver or syncytial hepatitis. So the liver will malfunction when the liver uh, failure the fish will get ascites in the internal organ. So the abdomen will be get big because the ascetic fluid is inside their body. And uh, another, another non-specific clinical size you can see like uh, hemorrhage and sometimes uh, pale uh, color at the external uh, body surface. Okay. okay, that that is all for the important disease for tilapia. Next is the important disease of uh, ASEAN CBAS or CBAS. Uh, I have to separate into uh, two type of culture, marine culture and freshwater culture. For marine culture, uh, it's a lot of disease, uh, more than freshwater culture, like streptococcosis, Tennessee baculosis, scale drop and muscle necrosis from vibrio species. It maybe it's, uh, can, it can be from bacteria and scale drop disease from virus infection. So two type. Uh, this one you can call scale drop and muscle necrosis disease is from vibrio. Uh, or you can call vibriosis. The next one is, <laughs> the next one is scale drop disease virus infection. You can, you can call them SDDV or SDDV uh, infection. Okay. Okay. Uh, the next one, infectious spleen and kidney necrosis virus, ISK and DV infection. Okay. Uh, this one may not spe specific only in marine fish because you can see ISK and DV infection in the freshwater culture, sea bass also. And some country, they have a report of ISK and DV in tilapia also. Okay. Uh, the next one is the viral nervous necrosis or VNN virus infection, Ivrido virus infection and parasitic infection. In freshwater culture, is streptococcosis, coronaris, aromona, septicemia, and also mixed with, uh, it can be infected with some um, virus, same as in marine culture, okay? And same as uh, in tilapia. The disease uh, in ASEAN CBA is usually infected by multiple organisms that we call uh, concurrent infection. For uh, ASEAN CBAS uh, stage of culture is similar to tilapia. Start from uh, hatchery, nursery, pre-grow out and grow out. Okay. Um, for uh, many emerging disease or new, newly emerged disease, you can see in all stage of CBAS culture. And for some uh, Pathogen like uh, VNN. VNN, you can see ma ma uh, majority in hatchery and nursery when, when fish will uh, still small and very young. Uh, parasite, actually, you can find in all stage of infection, but mainly in pre grow out, uh, especially in, in the seawater culture as in CBAS. ISK and DV and Iridovirus actually is the same one. Uh, it's the same group of virus, 
you can see uh, since uh, after the hatchery uh, stage, Tennessee baculum maritimum is uh, the, the bacteria characteristic is look like Fravo bacterium corum there, but it's in fact uh, sea water or marine uh, water culture fish only because they need salt, uh, they need um, sodium chloride for survival. So uh, you can see Tennessee Bacula maritimum in marine culture, ASEAN sea bass only, not freshwater culture, ASEAN sea bass. And Vibriosis, Vibriosis usually see in the nursery and pre grow out. Uh, streptococcus, streptococcus, you can see in uh, the pre grow out and grow out period. Okay. But uh, uh, the one that I show you is like the common, the common period that we can see the, the, the pathogen like this. But actually in the reality, sometimes you cannot fix idea that uh, the streptococcus you can see only in pre grow out and grow out period is messy in another period also. Okay, uh, this one I just would like uh, to make you to understand that uh, uh, the, the, the thing that I said on the, the, the slide of both tilapia and ASEAN sea bass, I just, I just talk about the common uh, thing that we will find in, in the stage of culture, but in the reality, you may see different. Okay, uh, the first disease in ASEAN uh, sea bass culture is the uh, fraval bacterium uh, coronary infection. You can see if this, if it's severe like this, uh, where it's very hard uh, for fish to uh, survive because it cannot exchange oxygen between water and uh, uh, their blood. So it will, uh, going to die soon after the kill completely necrosis like this. And uh, in, uh, okay, on this case, you can see the sudden back lesion, very clear. You, you can see it can, uh, it's usually start from the uh, dorsal fin and across the body, yeah, like this. And so then we have a fin rod, tail rod like this, same as in tilapia. The next one is the uh, bacteria from marine culture, sea bass. The name is the Tennessee baculosis, Tennessee baculum maritimum. The, the uh, collector, as I said, is look like Fravo bacterium corum there. And the clinical size uh, that uh, they made uh, to, to the fish is similar to Fravo bacterium also. But mainly they will infect uh, at around the, 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 the fin and uh, external uh, skin, make an external skin lesion to the fish. Okay. Scale drop disease virus, SDDV infection. The name is according to the clinical size that we found in fish when you use your hand uh, touch around the body of, of uh, the fish. It's very easy to get rid of the scale. This means the scale drop very, very, very fast. That is the, the clinic, uh, major clinical size of SDDV infection. You can see this one. Uh, the scale already erodes or drop from their body already. Okay, another bacterial uh, scale drop and muscle necrosis or SDMNDV it usually come from Vibrio species. Uh -huh. Mainly we found Vibrio harvii is uh, the major causative agent of this disease. But right now we can see that not only Vibrio harvii uh, that can cause uh, bacterial scale drop and muscle necrosis disease, but also another kind of Vibrio also like Vibrio vulnificus, Vibrio um, uh, Campbellii. Okay. 
Next, uh, disease is infectious spleen and kidney necrosis virus IS CANDB infection. You can uh, see uh, the clinical signs is like pale gill. The gills uh, color will be very pale and the uh, body color will be get black and the fish will get like emaciation or thin body. Viral nervous necrosis virus uh, VNN is mainly infects the, uh, the brain and meninge of the small fish. Irido virus infection, the major um, clinical size that you will see in irido virus infection is uh, <clears throat> uh, very high mortality in fish and sometimes you can see red eye like this and uh, the 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 <clears throat> body color of the fish will get <clears throat> sorry will get black also streptococcosis actually streptococcosis clinical size is similar to tilapia you can see the pop eye exoptomia and inside the body you, you can see the hemorrhage in in the internal organ sometimes you can also see the abscess or multiple abscess in internal organ and around <clears throat> the base of the fin of fish also. Okay, when, when we talk about the molecular research workflow for aquatic animal pathogen and, and the antimicrobial resistance, um, usually we start from the disease investigation. Okay, uh, that commonly made by veterinarian, commonly made by veterinarians. Okay, and then uh, after the veterinarians make a, a differential diagnosis, what kind of disease happened with fish in that farm? They will make a necropsies and sample collection. Okay, what what we need from sample collection and necrops uh, after necropsy, if you would like to keep it fresh for another purpose like bacterial isolation, viral isolation, you can keep it fresh. But if you need it uh, for uh, the uh, PCR or another molecular purpose in the future, you can keep the sample in the absolute alcohol fixation. 95% alcohol fixation, and then you can use it for tissue extraction and then uh, do the PCR in the future. Then um, if you need to um, do the histopathology or do uh, some experiment or some test like immunohistochem or uh, in situ hybridization in the future, you can fix it in 10% formalin fixation for making histo, uh, histology slide in the future and, that, and then use that histology slide for immunohistochemistry or uh, in situ hybridization in the future. Okay. In case that you need to um, do the isolation and identification of the pathogen, you can choose the several techniques also, like uh, some, some, some time you, you have to use conventional techniques because the molecular techniques uh, not available for that pathogen, okay? Or immunological techniques may not available for that pathogen. So for isolation and identification of the pathogen, I uh, suggest you to uh, separate into two purposes. If you would like to isolate an identification for keep the data for um, the disease, disease diagnosis or keep the data for research purpose, you can choose many, many techniques for, for perform. But if you would like to concern about the diagnosis, disease diagnosis, okay, uh, you have to concern about what is the best way to make a direct diagnosis or clear diagnosis for that disease is may not 
isolation and identification. So once again, I would like you to separate uh, the, the identification of the disease of the pathogen <clears throat> into two parts. The first part is the laboratory diagnosis. Sometimes you may use laboratory diagnosis for research or for the data support uh, for treatment in the future, okay. A is the laboratory diagnosis, but B is the disease diagnosis. Usually, if we concern about the treatment, the, the, uh, the disease diagnosis is very important for make a, uh, a treatment in the future. But anyway, both laboratory and molecular, uh, sorry, both laboratory and disease diagnosis is very important for uh, disease control, prevention and treatment for fish farm, okay? So now talk about isolation and identification of the pathogen. You can choose conventional techniques, like you can do the phenotypic characterization. Uh, many of you may call biochemical characterization for see the characteristic of the, the bacterial pathogen, like you may do the uh, Catalase test, oxidase test, mortality test, oxidative, fermentative test, and another secondary test like uh, urease test, um, MRVP citrate, U, uh, urease, something like that. That is we call conventional diagnosis. Or you may use immunological techniques for identify it. For aquatic animal pathogen, uh, usually we use immunological technique for in the process of uh, identify uh, the serotype of the pathogen like streptococcus serotype or um, um, yeah, usually we, we use for streptococcus for, for aquatic animals. Um, anyway, you can choose molecular techniques also. If you just need the data or you, you just need to know what kind of pathogen uh, cause the disease in that fish farm for like for find the, uh, the, the policy for make a control and prevention in the future, you may use like PCR or another molecular technique for identify. Yeah. But uh, usually if, uh, keep, please keep in mind if you use only molecular technique for identify. Sometimes you will don't have the, the live bacteria for doing another uh, purpose for find ant antibiotic for treatment of the disease. So uh, I would like to say that at least even you finally, you will, make, you will use the molecular techniques for identification of the pathogen. You, you need, you still need the uh, the live bacteria that grow on trade to do the um, antimicrobial susceptibility in the next step for find the right antimicrobial agent for treat the, the uh, fish disease, okay? So let's say that many techniques you can use, but please choose the best technique that give you a best benefit for uh, disease uh, control, treatment and prevention. Okay. Um, for molecular techniques and other advanced technique that uh, we have been used in uh, fish disease uh, area, that is the PCR, the real-time PCR, the sequencing, phylogenetics analysis, bioinformatics, and some of uh, fast uh, diagnostic techniques like uh, loop mediated isothermal amplification, uh, RPA, or you can use the, we call commercial identification system, like YTEC2 system and multi-top system for uh, identify the bacteria, and for YTEC2 system, it can be used for um, do the antimicrobial susceptibility for select the, the, the good antibiotic for treatment also. 
Okay, for the next part, I think I cannot um, give you uh, all information for a lot of uh, pathogen in fish that the time may not enough. So I think, um, I think I will give you an example for the case study. Okay, we will uh, start from the case study on travel bacterium infection, how to uh, study with them, how to characterize and how to use the information that we obtain from the characterization for the next uh, purpose for the vaccines or another uh, prevention and control strategies, okay. Um, for uh, our study about FRAVO bacterium, we, we start because uh, we, we hypothesize that in the reality of this lot in culture fish farm uh, is made due to multiple infection, not single infection. So uh, we start to investigate uh, outbreak in tilapia in Thailand, what uh, happened for them. Yeah, because the is is obviously see that that on that time the mortality in tilapia in that uh, tilapia is more than fifty percent, and the external clinical side is coronary-like like infection, but when we make a necropsy, the internal organ is also hemorrhage. So uh, we keep in mind that uh, it may be come from many pathogens, not only from bacterium coronary. So then we collect the moribund fish and investigate. We do the bacterial isolation. Um, for this case study, you can see that when you would like to do the bacterial isolation for fish, it's made a little bit different from mammal or from uh, microbiology in, in, in human. You cannot uh, just only plate or just only streak the, the, the sample on the common uh, media like brat agar and macroti agar. Sometimes you have to use special media for them. This means you have to think about the, the pathogen that you make a differential diagnosis first. In this case, when we think about fravo bacterium, you Yes, we cannot, uh, we, we cannot streak the sample on brat agar, macronchi agar, because flower bacterium will not grow. We have to firstly think about AOA medium, okay, for flower bacterium, an occur and order medium. And we have to think about CHA for Francisella, because both, both of them, we can, uh, we can call them, uh, fastidious bacteria does mean bacteria that's uh, very hard to grow on common media. You have to use special media for grow them. Yeah. But for uh, another kind of pathogen, uh, such as Aromonas species and Edward Sela species, okay, we allow you to grow them on triptychase soy agar. Yeah. I suggest you use triptychase soy agar for a uh, bacterial pathogen in aquatic animal because sometimes if you use nutrient agar, you will meet some pathogen like streptococcus. If you use nutrient agar, even you mix with blood, it's very difficult to grow streptococcus or nutrient agar with uh, sheep blood. Okay, so I suggest to use, you use uh, triptychase soy agar mixed with sheep blood, 5% to grow the, uh, the bacteria, another bacteria in general. Yeah. After you isolation, okay, of course we have to come to the step of uh, identification. For identification, you, we also use both phenotypic and molecular identification. In our case, we use 16S RNA primer for amplification uh, of the 16S RNA gene. And then we, we submit uh, this uh, PISA product for sequencing and do the phylogenetics analysis. Okay. Uh, for some pathogen, we also use the specific PCR diagnosis from the internal organs of the diseased fish. Uh, that right now uh, we have a lot of uh, recommend primer pair 
for identify the pathogen for fish, you can see it from the list of OIE and FAO for the disease diagnosis recommendation for each disease. Okay, like uh, we have Plymer for Francisella species for Ibrido virus for Flavobacterium corrupti. Uh, some of you may, may uh, have a question why in that time I not use the primer for uh, tilapia leg virus because uh, this, this is the old research of me. Uh, in that time, we, we still not found tilapia virus infection in tilapia in Thailand. So that's why I use only one uh, primer pair that available for the virus in, in tilapia that is iridovirus, okay? Not, not uh, tilapia leg virus, okay? Then uh, this is the result of bacterial isolation and identification. You can see uh, the result that is answer our hypothesis and the research question. Yes, not only Flavobacterium coramne found to be infect the tilapia in that province, we also found uh, Aromonas, Veronii, Aromonas, uh, Dacensis, Vibrio corella, Presiomonas, Chichiloides, Streptococcus agalacti. Then just file the pathogen, it doesn't mean it's the causative agent or it doesn't mean the cause of infection. We need to prove by, we make a cock postulate. We give back all kind of pathogen to the fish and see which one is give the same clinical size of natural infected fish. Okay, I will talk about this later. Uh, we talk with the result of bacterial isolation from uh, phylogenetic genetic tree after we, we obtain the DNA sequence from the company, we blast and we do the phylogenetic tree. We can see that uh, we found Phyrobacterium coramne, uh, Streptococcus agalactiae, Vibrio cholerae, or Pestiomonas, Chichiloides, Aromonas, Veronia. Then we prove all of this pathogen by give back to the fish, challenge back to the fish. Okay. It's just uh, the result, result of the specific, the specific uh, PCR diagnosis. Okay, we got the 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 right band according to the expected band uh, pattern of each uh, bacterial species and each viral viral species. Okay. Okay, uh, for this table, just would like to show you what kind is what kind uh, of the major uh, bacterial species that we found from each farm. Okay, we can see that we found uh, Flavobacterium coramne and Aromonas veronii as a major from each farm. Same. Then we focus on these two species. We give back Flavobacterium coramne. Uh, Aromonas veronii, uh, Streptococcus agalactiae also, even we we not found it as 100% and uh, Pesiomonas chicheloides back to the fish by intraperitoneal injection. Uh, except for Flavobacterium coramne, we use uh, IM injection because in that time, as I remember, we, we try intraperitoneal injection injection but the fish uh nothing happened with the fish so we have to modify the injection method okay um then okay uh you you may suspect why the challenge dose 
is different. It depends on uh, how many uh, colony forming units unit of the bacteria uh, when we inject to the fish in that time because we culture it uh, in the same exactly in the same time. Same incubator, same time, uh, same method, but uh, when we when we use that uh, bacterial culture for injection, we, we don't know at, at uh, that time how many colony forming units uh, per fish that we use. We have to calculate back later. Then we found that the challenge dose is different, but in uh, is in the similar uh, dose around ten to the power seven and ten to the power eight per fish, okay, around this, this dose. Then uh, when we inject back to the fish, we found that the percentage cumulative uh, mortality or uh, the, the bacteria that make, it, uh, make, make the fish dead mainly is Aromonat veronii, followed by Fravobacterium coramne and Streptococcus agalactiae. Praseomonas chicheloides not give a, obviously the mortality for fish that is same same level as the control. So if we would like to order the importance of the species for the concurrent infection for this tilapia is Aromonas veronii, Fravobacterium coramne, uh, and Streptococcus agalactiae. Then we compare. We have to uh, we have to compare the clinical signs of experimentally infected diseased fish and naturally diseased fish. We can see that the clinical sign is similar between natural and experimentally infected fish, both external clinical sign and internal clinical signs. Then we can conclude that. Uh, Fravobacterium coramne and Aromonas veronii is concurrent disease in tilapia. Uh, in, in that case, is affect to the mortality, uh, mass mortality of tilapia in that case. So the, uh, we, we, we report to the journal as the concurrent infection of uh, Fravobacterium coramne. Um, Aromonas veronii and some uh, Ibridovirus infection in, in tilapia. And we, uh, after that, we also found other evidence of co concurrent infection during the disease outbreak in the same uh, province in Thailand. That is, we found Francisella nautunensis subspecies orientalis and Fravobacterium coramne mix infection together. Okay. As you can see in the clinical side, this clinical side, you can see uh, the gill necrosis is caused by Fravobacterium coramne, and you can see the white spot nodule in internal organ that come from Francisella species. Okay, and uh, in that time, we uh, published is in, in uh, aquaculture in the natural concurrent infection of bacterial and viral pathogen in disease outbreak in culture nine tilapia farm in Thailand. <clears throat> and uh, the other, other evidence of concurrent infection that I said we published in a culture also in concurrent infection of Fravo bacterium coramne uh, and Edward Stella italuli in striped catfish. Okay. Then when, uh, when we uh, characterize the pathogen is generated, our another idea uh, to, to analyze and to study more about that pathogen, then we think about the virulence of rhizoid morphotype and non rhizoid morphotype of Fravobacterium coramne. Because when we culture them, we found two types non rhizoid morphotype and rhizoid morphotype, we think we hypothesize that 
these two kind of uh, colony morphotype may give a difference in virulence and pathogenesis to the fish. Okay, then we start to uh, we start our con conceptual framework or research framework by start with the uh, phenotypic and genotypic characterization of the flavobacterium coramnae. Okay. And then we do the genetic characterization. Uh, we use 16S RFLP, restriction fragment length, polymorphism. We use intergenic spacer region sequencing and phylogenetic analysis. We use 16S RNA sequencing and phylogenetic analysis combined together. I, I put a lot of method like this because I will say that uh, for the genetic characterization to give a best discrimination power, sometimes you have to analyze the data by many methods together because some uh, only, only single method may, uh, may not give the best discrimination power enough to do the genetic characterization. In, in that time, we would like to uh, classify the clade of flavobacterium or group of flavobacterium that we found in Thailand. Okay, then after we apply many methods like that, we found that uh, the flavobacterium in Thailand that we found, we found it in Genomoa 1 and Genomoa 2. Majority is Genomoa 2, okay. Okay, and then when you use when you use uh, the uh, phylogenetic T4 characterize them, you uh, you also can obviously see that uh, flavobacterium that uh, outbreak in Thailand can be separated into two branch, and uh, when analyzed together, we can say that it's uh, in flavobacterium in branch one and branch two is in the genomoa one and genomoa two. And then we, we found that uh, is the first thing is we have a good agreement between intergenic spacer region and 16S RNA phylogenetic tree analysis. When we, when we do this both method, we, we have a good agreement between two things. But uh, the 16S RFLP result is not correlated to 16S RDNA phylogenetics analysis. But sometimes uh, you can say that sometimes you need many uh, methods to confirm the genomoa or a group of the bacterial species that you need to classify. And right now, uh, one of our colleague, Professor Lafent from USDA, he developed the, the good method for uh, classify flavobacterium that use uh, as a standard in the flavobacterium coronal world. That is, uh, we call the, the PCR, multiplex PCR for identify the uh, genetic group of flavobacterium coronal. Okay. For the willow lens of both rhizoid and non rhizoid we also make experiment until we found that the rhizoid morphotype is the willow lens one, but non rhizoid morphotype is non willow lens. Uh, to the tilapia. Okay. Sorry, I go fast because the time is not enough. Okay. Next case study is streptococcosis. Okay. Uh, streptococcus is the gram negative bacteria. Uh, strepto for streptococcus galactea is group B streptococci. Okay. Is can cause the disease in uh, many kinds of animal and also human, but uh, the, the serotype that cause disease in human, uh, cow and aquaculture is made different serotype. Okay. So you can say that the streptococcus is uh, 
can be the zoonotic pathogen also because sometimes it can be infect human. Okay. In Thailand and also in ASEAN country, we found the streptococcus in aquaculture like the two two kind of streptococcus majority two kind. Uh, Streptococcus galactiae and Streptococcus inea, okay? And uh, the zero type, uh, sorry, I talk about only the information in Thailand. The zero type that we found in Thailand is 1A, 1B, and zero type three, that uh, some zero type you can see is same as in human, can you see? So like 1A, can be a zoonotic pathogen that can be infect human also tree, zelotide tree also. Okay. And right now we have many cases uh, uh, of zelotide tree uh, of streptococcus galactiae from fish that can infect and cause septic semia in human, okay. Is, is the zero tie that uh, we concern for human infection. For bovine, still a lot of uh, non-specific zero type uh, that we have to uh, evaluate more what kind of zero type in bovine. But uh, please focus on, on fish that we, uh, we, we should be focused. Uh, the zero type that we found in fish is 1A, 1B, and zero type three. Uh, and uh, for, for this sentence, is we, we have to keep in mind when we, we would like to develop the vaccine for streptococcus, the clause protection of heterologous serotype is very limited for streptococcus uh, in each serotype. This means if you use serotype, uh, streptococcus serotype 1A for make a vaccine, it may not protect the disease that's caused by zero type one B or zero type three. Okay. This is the distribution of streptococcus agalactiae zero type in the world. North America one A, South America one B, European country one A, Southeast ASEAN country one A, one B and three, Australia one A, China, Central Asia is 1A and 1B. Why I show this one to you? Because I would like to say on uh, according to the next, next uh, of my talk that the zero type of streptococcus and some bacteria that we have to concern zero type. Zero type is very important because sometimes we have to evaluate that it uh, can be make a clause protection for another zero type or not. And uh, I think the, the clause protection is still a problem for making streptococcus agalactiae vaccines because very hard to give a clause protection for another zero type. For zero type, actually you can use zero type, serology method to do the zero typing for streptococcus, but uh, you can also use, we call molecular serotyping also by use the uh, primer uh, for each capsular serotype and do the multiplex PCR. You can see uh, uh, the, the serotype, like what, what kind of serotype, 1A, 1B, 3, and also uh, serotype uh, 2 to 9 also. Yeah, by using the multiplex PCR. And once again, we call it molecular serotyping. Okay. And we, when we do the characterization uh, and uh, genome analysis, we can see high genetic variation amongst Streptococcus galactiae. Okay, conclusion for streptococcus that we study and we characterize, we see that at least three uh, species of streptococcus found uh, circulate in Thailand. Streptococcus agalactiae uh, serotype 1A is the major cause 
of streptococcosis in Thailand and is uh, correlate with high temperate high water temperature if more than 32 degrees Celsius uh, is the risk factor for streptococcus infection uh, and it will make massive inflammation related to mortality of fish and we found high genetic variation with geographical dependent in Thailand. Our universal effic efficient vaccine is still a wait to be developed, but uh, it's very difficult to make it as a universal because as I said, because uh, it's a very rare of cross protection of the different zero types. So, uh, the universal efficient vaccine is both a wet and ideal vaccine for streptococcus uh, agalage right now. Okay, uh, Dr. Anto, I think the times may not enough, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay, but anyway, uh, we, we still have a, a case study of Francisella. I think you can uh, study uh, by yourself on, on my PPT slide. Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you very much, Ajahn uh, Chakarong, for very interesting and insightful uh, presentation that you gave, especially on uh, the different types of uh, pathogen in fish and also uh, it, is, it is time how to identify uh, the fish pathogen, uh, the step, uh, how to identify the pathogen and the method and things like that. I think it's very, uh, very interesting uh, for the uh, participant as you know, the problem with the fish industry or the fish farm is the pathogen. And uh, we have already question in the chat room here. Uh, wait a second. Okay, before uh, I read the question. Uh, okay, uh, Irfan Ambas, uh, please, if you have any question, uh, step your uh, institution and ask your uh, question. Okay. I, I can see the question. I will. Uh, it's the question from uh, Ravis Tia from uh, Magister I, Biology, right? Uh, okay. okay. Or oh, before uh, that? Yeah, before that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There are four uh, questions from the chat room. Okay. Yes. Okay, the first one. First is from. Uh, okay, from Fabrina, right? Yeah, Fabrina. Okay, okay Fabrina. Uh, since the immune response of fish is different from terrestrial animal, would you explain the effectiveness of uh, the vaccines in fish? I still don't really sorry. I still I still don't really understand the mechanisms of vaccination in fish. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you for uh, this question, Fabriana. Actually, the uh, the I will say that the immune response of uh, fish, even is different, but is similar to terrestrial animal. They also have. Uh, in fish, they also have the uh, specific and non-specific immune response, and they also have tumoral and cell-mediated immune response, same as uh, uh, mammal or terrestrial animals. Uh, some uh, even they they have some a little bit different. For example, uh, in the blood circulation for mammal is mainly maybe IgM and IgG, right? But in fish is uh, mainly is IgM. Okay, uh, both both in uh, in blood circulation and in the mucosal surface. Okay. 
So I will say that uh, it's deep, it's uh, uh, similar to to the uh, immune response is similar to the terrestrial animal. Okay, so the concept is vaccination or the uh, or the me mechanisms of vaccination is the same. Just mean uh, after you give the antigen antigen to the fish, it will be go to the cell uh, that responsible for immune response and then generate the specific immune response to that antigen, same as in terrestrial animals. Okay. Um, Next is uh, from Alpha Bitian. Okay. Um, I am Kondro Hadi Tomo from a core culture, the Pinagoro University. Oh, good. You have you have a core culture section also. The occurrence of The occurrence of several disease outbreak with uh, more than one bacterial attack are, are frequently occurring in Indonesia also, right? Okay. In relation of fish disease outbreak in general co-infection, on the other side, we reveal a large number of bacteria that are already resistant to antibiotics. Okay. I'm interested about how you or the government in Thailand are handling fish disease issue at the farm level. Okay, you, you may mean the responsibility of us, right? Uh, actually, the, uh, the researcher or the, the instructor like me in the university, we don't have the responsibility directly to, to, to responsible for the disease outbreak in the farm, but let's say we, we help the farmer by ourselves because we also uh, uh, would like to, 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 to make a research together along together with, with the disease outbreak in the farm. But uh, if you ask, like we have a direct responsibility for, for take care of like that disease outbreak or not is, is, uh, is the responsibility of Department of Fishery, not, not, not the uh, university instructor like us or the researcher right, like us. Yeah. Just um, how do you say, we, we collaborate, we can collaborate with Department of Fishery for for uh, for service or for to 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 solve the problem for the farmer that have the disease outbreak. Okay, I'm not sure that is <laughs> direct to to uh, uh, my answer will direct to the question that you asked or not. Okay. Uh, next. Dear professors, Professor Chanaloy, I'm racist here from Magister Biology. Okay. I uh, think there is Bill from uh, Arena Phil, Steve Jay University. Which after, one? Sorry. Ah, oh, sorry. Yeah. Arena Phil, right? Yes. Okay. As an Eco toxicologists I understand that my contaminants in water can also create serious problems to fish. Yes, <laughs> uh, the causes which may occur are fin erosion, epidermal hyperplasia, or papilloma, inhibit inhibition of egg hatching degenerative and necrotic alteration in many visceral organs. To mention some studies show they can induce spread to fish, destroy immune system and make them vulnerable to many opportunistic pathogens. My question are, did you experience to study water quality and fish health under intensive farming condition? Yes, we uh, we uh, we always study uh, the the fish health or and fish disease under intensive farming condition. With uh, we have to we have to 
observe the water quality together, but uh, the water water quality that we observe is be general uh, generally uh, water quality that affect to to the fish like ammonium uh, level, ammonia level, nitrate nitrile level, um, hardness, salinity, pH, something like that. We we uh, we didn't uh, how to say evaluate the pollutant or, or some some chemical reagent that contaminate uh, in in the water. Yeah, I understand your question. You you may thinking that uh, sometimes the disease outbreak may not come from the infectious. Uh, agent only is may come from the pollutant in the water that that we have to investigate if you if you hypothesize like that at least you have to uh, analyze the water quality to obtain the data enough that that, that disease is come from uh, the contaminant or not um, but at least when we isolate the pathogen from, from the clinical sites that we found like uh, erosion, fin uh, rot, uh, epidermal hyperplasia or hemorrhage, we, we always found the pathogen that uh, is recorded as a causative agent uh, of, of fish disease before. Okay. Uh, next question, how to achieve and maintain water quality through all stage of production for overall fish health and performance? Okay, good question. But this one is the problem, I think, uh, worldwide problem because sometimes, not sometimes, when we culture the uh, fish or we do a poor culture, we, we do it in earthen pond or in some country do in the liver catch culture or floating catch culture in the liver. So it's very hard to control the water quality. We have to base on the, the, the uh, we have to always uh, facing the climate change, the seasonal change, and uh, many things that will make water quality change is hard to control, but we have to stay on the problem and we have to immediate uh, we have to uh, how to say evaluate the problem very fast that is uh, come from the water quality or not okay I think last question from the chat room okay. Uh, since the immune response of fish are ah, already yeah answer this one. Uh, the last, uh, last, last last question yeah. is la list here right <laughs> yeah okay in in organic fish aquaculture management to handle the pathogen infection we avoid to use antibiotics if we use herbal medicines treatment from plant extract or essential oil how much effective using herbal medicine to treat or reduce the virulence of uh, bacterial pathogen. Okay, uh, I, I, I have to answer like this. Actually, the thing that you ask, we call alternative to antibiotics. It's good idea, it's good idea. But anyway, you have to have the, the, the background or information before that, uh, that uh, plant extract or herbal uh, medicine, this can be treat the, that kind of pathogen or not. For example, if we have the Flavobacterium coramna of uh, coramnaris outbreak, if you, if you don't have a basic background that your herbal medicine or your plant extract can be used or not, you have to test same as uh, antibiotic susceptibility test. And uh, after you test, it can be destroyed from all bacteria you can use. But please keep in mind another, another um, information you need to know also. For example, is safe for fish or not? 
because it's not same as antibiotic. Antibiotic may uh, they may prove before that it's safe for fish in that dose. But if you use very new herbal medicine, you have to uh, test or you have to research before that that herb is safe for fish or not. Okay, if if it's very new and just you just test it for uh, like uh, effect to not or not effect to the, the the bacterial pathogen or not, but you still not test a uh, safety test do the safety test for the fish. I don't. Uh, I will not suggest you to use that one. You you should you should test. Uh, you should make the the safety test to the fish before also. Okay. The sec second question have uh, there been cases of multi drug resistant bacteria that have uh, infected fish or uh, other marine organisms. Thank you. Good question. Actually, we have a lot. Uh, uh, in in my uh, last four or five slides, actually, I will talk about this thing, multi-drug resistant and, and the resistant bacteria, but, but because time is not enough, so you can you can read it in, in my last part of the slide, uh, talking about how to uh, characterize and how to study uh, resistant and multi-drug resistant in bacteria. Okay. In, in my uh, the, in the case study that I give to all of you in PPT, that is the uh, we call the resistome analysis for analyze the multi drug resistant bacteria. Okay, uh, and uh, when we apply that the resistome analysis to to uh, our bacterial pathogen in Thailand, we found uh, many many multi drug resistant bacterial pathogen. In, in uh, from that isolate from fish farm in Thailand. Yeah. Okay, I think that's all for the question, right? Yes, uh, thank you very much, Susan Tamarong. Uh, one small question maybe from the audience, if they want to raise their hand, uh, please. If there are any question, okay. Uh, okay. Please, the phone numbers. Hello? Ah, okay. Uh, okay. Sudah masuk suara saya, Bu? Ya, silakan. Okay, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Professor. Uh, good afternoon. Yeah, uh, my name is Irfan. Uh, I am... Um, very pleased to be able to join your presentation. It's very good. Uh, <coughs> it's very clear. Uh, but uh, <coughs> I have a few questions because the uh, couple years ago, I'm working on I'm probiotics. From, from where you are? Uh, from Hasanuddin University in okay. Makassar. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <coughs> okay, probiotics. Okay. Yeah, probiotics. Uh, <coughs> The first question is, uh, is there any uh, in your uh, research group uh, have mm -hmm. uh, trying uh, using probiotics in relating yes. to overcome uh, this uh, disease uh, on tilapia or uh, sea bass? Uh, because yes. uh, my experience with probiotics, yeah, and many uh, scientists believe that, uh, and they suggest because this is environmentally Friendly yeah, using probiotics than compared to other yes. uh, other uh, <clears throat> uh, 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 what we uh, understand using probiotics that we can uh, either uh, select or screening probiotics uh, uh, first from the uh, host yeah from a mm -hmm. healthy tilapia yeah mm -hmm. and also also pro, uh, from uh, commercial available probiotics. And then we can uh, challenge this in the lab scale or on the uh, Petri dish scale yeah, to okay. compete between these two. Yeah, uh, especially at the most uh, 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 <clears throat> dangerous uh, bacteria disease in, uh, in tilapia, for example. And then if uh, also uh, the screening process is not the, uh, uh, yeah, we can say not very simple actually, but uh, <clears throat> Uh, if uh, we done it properly, you can uh, yeah work effectively and uh, 
to solve the uh, disease issue in tilapia, for example. And what uh, scientists uh, used to uh, do is uh, screening uh, from the healthy uh, host animal, uh, like for example, healthy tilapia, mm -hmm. and then introduce as early as possible. Yeah? So the mm -hmm. bacteria, potential probiotic bacteria can establish themselves in the mm -hmm. uh, intestine of the animals as early as possible. So mm -hmm. they can naturally can protect themselves in the in the in their uh, own natural yeah, environment. And this is uh, the first step. But the, the most important thing also that uh, <coughs> we should be careful with the uh, uh, vaccine or uh, yeah, vaccine uh, resistant uh, isolates yeah, during the screening because uh, what uh, some paper says that uh, the uh, vaccine resistant of the uh, probiotic we choose maybe uh, can be transferred to other uh, bacteria in the intestine or in the environment of the animal. So uh, people when do the screening of the probiotics candidates for a particular animal should be uh, also doing this uh, uh, screening process properly, right? So, mm -hmm. but uh, mm -hmm. if I don't, uh, probably I missed some part of your uh, presentation, but uh, I haven't seen uh, yeah, uh, what I understand that you don't mention uh, uh, much about the, uh, the the probiotics, yeah, the, the the study on probiotics, yeah, in relating to the upper kind of this disease of the tilapia, of the tilapia, right? Okay. And then uh, uh, this is the first question. And the second one. Uh, oh, can you shortcut the question, please? I'm yeah, sorry. one more, please. Uh, uh, have you uh, successfully using vaccine uh, in relating to? Uh, overcome all tilapia disease issues in Thailand. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you very much. Okay. Th thank you very much uh, for, for the question. Uh, actually, uh, the question about the probiotic is very good. It's, it's the new concept for core culture, okay? Uh, we, we call the alternative to antibiotics. That means we, we, we uh, usually avoid using antibiotics for a core culture then the, the probiotics is one of the choice. Yeah. Uh, uh, actually, I talk, I already talked in the first part of my talk. Maybe you 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 not come to my it. talk in, yeah. in, you, you miss my talk. Okay. Uh, uh, probiotics or immunostimulant is also one of the part of uh, uh, alternative to antibiotics and vaccines also. Okay. And uh, uh, for, for your research, I think it's very important for the screening process of the probiotics using in, in aquaculture. Okay, the, uh, actually, we have many, many uh, methods to, to screen the probiotic before we use in aquaculture, including it should not transfer antibiotic resistance, as you said. It should save to the fish. This means if we... Uh, isolate it from from the fish species itself yeah. it should be better than than yeah. from another place yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, for if we talk about biotechnology to do that right now we have a microbiome or metagenomic uh, analysis or metagenomic research that we can uh, okay. see what kind of probiotics in tilapia or fish intestine and after we found the right species, we can use uh, many methods to, to screen the probiotic. So as you said, uh, resistant or to antibiotic or not, is uh, heat resistant or not, because they have to pass the process of uh, production, right? Uh, is uh, uh, tolerate, tolerate to the bisol in fish gut or not? Uh, many many things we have to test yeah be before before it's come to be the right anti uh, probiotics for aquaculture yeah and i'm, I'm I sorry agree. to interrupt sir. i'm sorry to interrupt uh, we have you ever uh, which species of probiotic have been tested in tilapia so far in your group uh, in my in, in my group, uh, we use the the probiotics, uh, the the strain that not not uh, 
come from the animals. Uh, tilapia intestine. It's come from yeah. animal, but from from another kind of animal. Oh, okay. In 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 my group, we use lactobacillus, uh, lactobacillus uh, okay. rhamnosus. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. To 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 test in tilapia. Actually, this this kind of probiotic is used in human. The yes. aim, the the objective is why we use uh, uh, the the lactobacillus lactobacillus because uh, we think that if this probiotic bacteria is remain or is contaminated in tilapia meat, and when people uh, eat this this uh, this kind of uh, fish product that contaminate with probiotic with probiotic bacteria, they will be safe because. Is also the probiotic for human. That's why we we use uh, the plantalum to 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 be a probiotic in tilapia, and it's work well. Yeah. Oh, okay. The the efficacy is well, and we already published that one. Okay. Okay. Uh, the last one is the the vaccine. The vaccine, <laughs> right? The effective of uh, of vaccine. Actually, for my group, we uh we success. Uh, okay. to be evaluated the, the the efficacy of vaccine only one kind of vaccine that is the nano vaccine for fravo bacterium corruptor is oh. give give the uh, high relative percent survival allow 70 to 80 percent to oh. the fish after use the vaccine yeah and it can uh, simulate uh, many kind of immune response that we evaluate from the uh, real-time pcr or qpcr to see the uh, both specific and non-specific immune response of fish after use these uh, nano vaccines. Okay, so does it mean that since you uh, apply using this vaccine, there is no more, uh, uh, yeah, a big issue um, related to the fish? This uh... our, our vaccine is just finish the the laboratory process. Oh, we, okay. we we not uh, selling or we not launch in the market right now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank yeah. you, sir. Actually, actually, I'm gonna talk about these vaccines uh, on on next time on no uh, the the first November. Yeah. Okay. 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 So thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Panda. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Sergeant Sanarong. And actually, we still we still have one more meeting next week, and the topic will be the development of this vaccine, right, uh, the Okay. Ah, okay. okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, okay, one more question, and then after that we we have to finish because time is up. Uh, the last question is from uh, Department of Aquaculture. It's in chat room. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's the last one. Okay, two question, right? Uh, uh, because of prevalence use of uh, antibiotics for fish disease treatment. In the last decades, especially in Southeast Asia, there are emerging of antibiotic resistance in core culture bacterial pathogen. A size of vaccination, one of the solutions that researchers try to use is the use of bacterial fast. Hmm, good question. Against bacterial pathogen in the core culture, what is your opinion about this solution? Since there are mixed reactions in the solution, okay. Okay, answer the first question first. Uh, bacterial fast. Okay, once again, is one, one kind of alternative to antibiotics also, yeah. But uh, when, you, when you use bacterial fast in a core culture, uh, we have two or three things that we have to keep in mind. The first thing is the bacterial fast will very specific to the tied to the uh, genus and species of the bacteria. And it's very uh, specific to the uh, location. For example, uh, the bacterial fast for, for Aromonat hydrophila from Indonesia may cannot destroy Aromonat hydrophila from Thailand. So this is, you have to keep in my, if you would like to use uh, the bacterial fast, let's say the bacterial fast is, is very difficult to use as a universal and uh, alternative to antibiotics. It's not same as antibiotic that you can use is anywhere. Yeah, th th this is a little bit hard for bacterial fast, but when it's specific 
to that kind of bacteria, it will be very perfect to destroy the bacteria. I also, in my group, we also have the, the research of a specific bacterial fast to, to aromonat hydrophila uh, from Vietnam and it's worked very well. And we can see that uh, when we test it with the aromonat hydrophila that isolate from Thailand or another species of aromonat, it will not destroy. Yeah. Okay. Um, another question, what is the uh, usual way to administer fish vaccine in Thailand? Okay. Uh, usual way is injection. Yeah. But uh, the farmer, they, they not usually like or prefer this way because it's laborious. And uh, when uh, one, one pain point that is difficult to, to use the injection vaccine is some disease is occurred in very small fish, not more than five gram or not more than 10 gram. So you cannot use injection for sure. That's why I keep this pain point to, to develop the kind of uh, mucoadhesive immersion vaccine for using in the fish in very small size, like one to five gram of fish. Okay. And after that, it can be give a, a immune response or protection to the fish. After that, around uh, 60 days after vaccination. So it will, it will be uh, good for avoid the usual way uh, of vaccine that is injection. And we call the, the needle free injection, uh, the needle free vaccination, sorry. And is the vaccine that developed that is available and cost effective for the local farmer? Uh, if, if you mean my vaccine that I developed, a lot. Uh, actually, uh, we, as I said, it's just finished uh, the laboratory scale when we have to launch to the farmer to the field scale or, or easy to say, if we would like to say we have to do the market research that the farmer happy or not to, to do our vaccines. But let's say uh, briefly, uh, my vaccines uh, cost is around, I don't know how to, how to calculate in Indonesia, but it's around 10, one, one, uh, one, uh, one ten baht, one ten Thai baht, like zero, zero one Thai baht uh, okay. per, per small fish. So, uh, 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 in the, uh, the, 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 the feeling of the farmer in many farms that I observed before, they, they think that it's, it's, it's cheap enough. Yeah. But we have to concern if we have to do many kinds of vaccine in the same time, for example, 10 kinds of vaccines, it will be in, increase the cost to produce the fish already one Thai bar per one fish. Uh, okay. Yes. Yeah. So, so uh, this is a good question also. We have to think about the cost effectiveness. Mm -hmm. But uh, as I said in the, pre, uh, in the first part, when we do the vaccine, of course, we cannot, we cannot develop and do it in all kinds of pathogens that have an outbreak in your country. You have to select maybe at least one, two, three, three kind of pathogen that um, is make, is make a, uh, a serious problem for your fish farm. Yeah, you cannot That's do major it. Disease. Yeah, major disease. Yeah, ma the major world. disease. Three, uh, three, uh, around three to five kind of major fish disease. Yeah, only to okay. also save the cost, cost effectiveness of the vaccines. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Sajan Chanarong. Uh, we really have a uh, great knowledge from you uh, regarding this topic, and uh, we're waiting for next week regarding the development okay. of uh, vaccine uh, in Thailand, especially in your uh, research uh, research center. And okay. again, thank you very much uh, for your time uh, to give us 
uh, new knowledge on this uh, disease uh, in fisheries. And thank you very much. I think okay. we, will, uh, we will meet uh, next week at the same time at 12. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Anto. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much, Dr. Anto. Uh, that's all, everybody. Uh, very interesting presentation and talk and discussion with Ajahn Sanarong from Chulalong Khan University. And we invite you as well to uh, attend the second lecture on the development of vaccine in fisheries. So uh, thank you very much for your attention and your participation. And see you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Sanaran. Uh, okay, come. So we can leave. Uh, Short introduction. I'd like to share my screen with the permission of the organizer. My screen is with us. Yes, sir. This is back screen. Yeah, yes. So the topic that has been given to me today is prospect challenges and solutions for the aquaculture seed industry. So this is a very broad uh, topic and it was a lot of uh, information. And I feel that this uh, workshop has